Hi, I'm Tim Scheib, husband of one, father of five, realtor, and this is Behind the Sign. To build a custom or to build a BTO, what is the difference? A custom build is when you actually have a plan that you create, that you bring to the builder and you say, I want this home. And you build that house, you go through the floor plan, you put your walls where you want them, your bathrooms, and you make a ton of changes and you do all your selections. That is a custom. A BTO is a built to order. And typically what that means is a builder has, you know, a handful of plans that they have. They have a book that has, you know, we've got 15 plans. You get to choose one of those plans and you pretty much build it the way it is. And there's a benefit to a BTO. Typically it's cheaper. Uh, when you do a custom, the price can just go through the roof, especially in today's market when everything is so expensive. How do you get started with a custom? You can get started with a custom with finding the right lot. Uh, a lot of times builders own the majority of the lots. So if you find a lot that a builder owns, you're probably going to have to build with that builder. There are some lots that are bring your own builder. And at that point, then you got to go find your builder. Now, how do you do that? How do you know, how do I find the right builder for me? Uh, I would like to say I'm a realtor. So I'd like to say you call a realtor and you ask a realtor for advice. Let them help you through that process. If someone calls me, here's what I say. Uh, are you looking to make a ton of changes? Are you looking for someone who's going to be hands-on where you can actually talk to the owner of the company, walk through the house with the owner of the company? Or are you looking to save a little bit of money and get more square footage for your dollar? Those are the two major questions. Because if you're trying to save money, you want a builder that's a little bit cheaper, then you want to go with a builder that's got more houses that does, you know, builds, you know, 100 to 100, 200 houses a year, because what they have is they have crews, they have, you know, everything's in line, you're probably going to have to build one of their plans. If that builder does allow customs, which right now in this market, not highly likely that they're going to allow full full out customs. But if they do, they get better pricing on lumber and all that. But you're going to work with the general, you're not going to you're a superintendent of that development or of that plan or of that house, you're not going to work with the owner. The majority of the time that owner, he has all of his superintendents do the work. On a custom, that person's name is on it, so they might take a little more care, but it's probably gonna cost you a fair amount more money. Also, when you go that route, you have to make a lot more choices. And when you have the choice to make, you end up picking the higher end one. Uh, that's just human nature. We like better stuff, so we're gonna want this better stuff, especially in a house and that huge investment. You want the top quality products. You want everything done you know, perfectly, looking good. They might have a designer that you meet with. You meet with a designer. Designers love to spend money. So what you're having as a customer, you're gonna just, the cost is gonna go up a ton. You could see the same size house that's a BTO go for twenty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 less than maybe a custom would. And it could be higher than that, depending on the, the size of the home and the price of the home. Starting with a lot, though, you got to find out where you want to live. Uh, you know, in a market like I'm in right now, I would say probably 90 to 95 percent of the lots are owned by a builder. You need to find where you want to live. And if that lot is owned by a builder, then you need to interview that builder and see what they can do. If that doesn't mesh well with you or say there's a builder out there that, you know, all your friends say, stay away from that builder and they are the only one building in that area, then you have a real tough choice to make. On a custom that you can find a lot that's bring your own builder, you know, that's totally different, but that's very hard to find. And if you're looking out, like right now, it's a huge demand. We want land. We want four acres. We want to build a house out there. There are so many variables. A lot of times those bigger builders that you do the 100, 200, 300 homes a year, they won't touch that because there are so many variables and it's a very time consuming project. So you'll want to find one of those smaller builders that has built on acreages that understands uh, country building because you've got, you got to put in uh, a lot of times you got to run water all the way from the street. If there even is water there, you got to know that you got to do perk tests. You got to do all sorts of stuff out in the country that are different. You know, the perk tests are got to check to see if the septic system, if the soil is good for that, what kind of septic you got to put in, how much that's going to cost. You got to check for culverts because typically from those county roads, you got to go across a ditch and build a driveway. How far back do you want to put your house? How long is a drive? 
There's a, there are so many variables involved in building in the country. You need to find a builder that's willing to take that on and who understands it. So building a custom is very detailed and it's a lot more difficult than finding that builder and doing a BTO. Through the process of a BTO with a bigger builder, this is a very hard thing for clients to understand. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times we tell them this, it is very difficult to accept and understand because you're building a house. Those BTOs, those bigger builders, they don't want to make changes. Once you sit down with them and you go through all the information that you need, you have your plans meeting where you, you know, say, I want to, I want this door to be gone. I don't want a door between my master closet and my master bathroom, you know, just to save wall space, stuff like that. You go through the plan, you make those little changes. Like I said, they're probably not going to redo an entire plan, but they will make a few changes. Then you go through your selections. So that, that's when you pick out your flooring, you pick out your countertops, your cabinets, all that stuff. And the bigger builders potentially are gonna have a big showroom. You go in there, they have everything in front of you. You can pretty much make all your decisions. Uh, if there is something you're hum on about, you could go into their vendor. Um, if they allow that, some of them don't even allow that. So your, your, your choices are a lot more limited on a BTO. Once you get through your plans and your specs and you pick everything out, then they go to permitting and then they dig the hole and they start building the house. Oftentimes what you'll see is you'll see a charge if you make any changes after that time. It could be as much as $300, dollars or $500 just to make a change. And there's a reason for that. One, they have staff who has to go through all the paperwork. They have to make all these changes. Not only that, but then they got to relay it to somebody and then they got to relay it to their, their, their uh, subcontractors and hope that they make, it, make that change correctly. There's a lot to it and it takes a lot of time. In addition to that, you know, if you want to say switch out something really simple and put dimmer switches in instead of uh, that's something that costs like maybe $100, $200 and there's a $500 change fee, it will prevent them from having to make those changes because why would you want to put a change in there that costs $200 and now pay $700 instead of $200? That's a difficult part for a buyer. Like, this is my house. I'm building my house. Why can't I make this change? Builders have rules for a reason. And the reason for that is oftentimes those changes can get missed. Something can get screwed up. And then it ends up costing the builder more than it was worth to do the change. And a lot of times these changes are pretty much cost. They don't charge extra money for the changes. If they do, it's so minimal you can't feel it. Uh, that's why they do that extra $500 or $300 charge just to make that change. It, is, it slows the process down too. Now, if you're building a custom, and oftentimes with the bigger ones as well, you get to do what they call an electrical walkthrough. Uh, they get the house, they frame it up, they get it all ready to go for the electrician, then the electrician will walk through with you because we know that you know, where you place outlets and you know, the, like I said earlier, a dimmer switch, I stuttered because that dimmer switch, you're probably gonna change that during electrical anyway. But after electrical, you can't. <laughs> but anyway, you walk through with that electrician and, you know, you might want a dimmer on this one. You might want, you know, a lot of times here in, in Iowa, I know that in the soffits, they put an outlet for Christmas lights and they put the switch in a closet or something so you can turn those on and off without having to, you know, go and plug in an extension cord. But there's a lot of little changes that you can make during that electrical walkthrough. But once that electrical walkthrough is done, typically it's over on a bigger on a on a bto or with a bigger builder with a smaller builder uh, a lot of times you get an actual trim walkthrough and when you go through the trim walkthrough you know you get to pick out different things with like your fireplace mantle your wood stain uh, where you want if you want an open handrail if you want metal spindles or if you want wood spindles that trim walkthrough is pretty nice to have but again, you end up spending a lot of money. I mean, you, you could be looking at a locker and next thing you know, it's a locker with cubbies on the bottom and the top and shiplap in the middle and granite for the seat. Well, now you just raise the price by about 1200 bucks or 1400 bucks. There's, that's a big addition to the house. So when you're going through the electrical walkthrough, you'd be surprised on how much, you know, the cost of electrical items can be, but then you go to the trim and it's like exponential. I guess, especially with lumber prices being so high right now, but you know, that, that trim walkthrough can cost a lot of money. And with, you know, you're playing on a custom, you just got to be ready for that. Uh, you know, I always try and help my clients keep it down because it's definitely a shell shocker when you get to the closing and now you're, you're a hundred thousand higher than you were when you started. Uh, that, that does happen. And it's like all of a sudden panic sets in. You have to be prepared when all these things hit, 
they add up quick and you, and you don't want to put yourself in a hole. But going through that custom process with a builder that is there, that answers your questions, that walks you through the houses, it can be comforting. But you just know you're spending quite a bit of money. I always say you pay for what you get and you can get a very nice BTO. You just may not get all the selections. You may not get all the warm fuzzies that you get, you know, with a smaller builder, a bigger builder. You're not going to get that. You're going to get some care. You're going to get customer service. You're going to get a lot of that stuff that you want, but you may not get those personal touches that you would with that smaller builder. So there's benefits to both. Um, it's really something that you have to decide what you want uh, and how you want your home to be and how long you plan on being in that home. One thing I always tell my clients and they're saying, well, we're building our forever home. This is kind of my joke. I, I always tell them, and if you've worked with me in the past, you know, I probably said it to you, never say forever home. Cause it seems like every time someone says we're looking to buy our forever home, or this is our forever home, they call me a year or two later and like, well, you know, we got transferred or, you know, the big D or something comes up and all of a sudden that house is for sale. So never plan on it being your forever home. If you are building a custom, make sure that you do things that are resellable. I mean, you always want it to be resellable. You don't want to you know, do something so crazy that you actually hurt the value of the property because nobody wants that. Anyway, back to building. So you find your lot, you pick your builder. I just went through you know, some of the ways you can decide on your builder, uh, what the BTO process is like. From that point, you know, typical build times are a little quicker with those bigger builders, okay? They've got crews that are designated specifically to them, so they have a lot more control of what their crews do, who their, who their subcontractors are, what houses they work on. On a bigger builder, they have less control of that, or a smaller builder has less control of that. But some of those smaller builders do the work themselves too, so they have you know, one specific trade that they can, you know, zip through and handle pretty well. But for the most part, it's a little tougher. They have to pay their subs a little bit more. Um, you know, you look at, here's common sense, right? If I've got a builder that's cheaper than everybody, we got, we got a builder in town that's absolutely, they blow everybody away on prices. I also know they're pretty rough on their, their subcontractors as far as pricing goes. Well, if you shoot for your lowest price that you can possibly get from a subcontractor, say I'm a, I'm a trim carpenter and I have, I have 10 crews and I have three builders that I send those 10 crews on all the time. I have this builder who's willing to pay this much per foot and I have this builder that's willing to pay this much per foot. We all know that we have best crews and worst crews. If your best crew is going out on a job are they going to the builder that pays this much? And are you sending your lower paid subcontractors to the builder that pays this much? I mean, common sense says that that's, gonna, that's what's going to happen. So when, when someone says, I want a quality builder, I want quality home, a lot of times you can get a little better quality from a smaller custom. Again, you pay for what you get. Not saying that these builders that pay less money don't have good carpenters in there doing the job. I'm just pointing out that, you know, when there's a reason pricing is cheaper here is because they do a larger volume and they're probably not going to put this guy over here that costs way more money to hire on that because they would end up losing money. So there's a lot of things to consider when building a home. And I, I'll say it one more time, you pay for what you get. Now, I'm again, I always have to put these things on there because it's going out to the public and everybody, but it doesn't mean that it can't have you can't get a good home from a big builder. It's not, it's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying you can get a great home from either one, but just understand the processes that go into it. You know, the bigger builder doesn't want to make all the changes because there's too many people. You know, you play telephone, someone's going to screw it up. The smaller builder that charges you a lot more handles a lot themselves. They charge you more. It's just the way it is. So when you're looking to build and you're trying to find a builder, first thing you do, call your realtor. Call me. I'd be happy to help you. Make sure that the agent that you're talking to knows construction, has been doing it for a while, knows the different builders, and can help you through that process. Number two, think about where you want to be, because that's going to play a huge role. In our market today, like I said, most of the lots are owned by builders. So if you want to be in a certain school district, then you might have to just look at the builders that, are, that own the lots in that area, because it can be pretty specific sometimes. So... Find the builder or call your agent, 
have them help you find the builder, have them help you find the lot, help you put it all together. And remember, if you want to save money, think about the bigger builders. If you want a solid house and you're not really concerned about the money, you just want it done right and you want it done for a fair price, you might want to look at some of the smaller builders. That's all I got for you today. We'll see you soon.